Welcome, friends, to this week's Calaventure. Today's video is going to be a little different. Instead of the usual non-scripted video, today we will offer information about the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge near Lawton, Oklahoma. As we take a short drive from end to end, I hope you enjoy this informational video and that it inspires you to visit this beautiful area. Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge was established to protect wildlife species that were in grave danger of extinction and restore species that had been eliminated from the area. Bison were reintroduced along with elk and wild turkey. More recent reintroductions include the prairie dog, the river otter, and burrowing owls. Established in 1901, Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge is one of more than 556 refuges throughout the United States managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The 59,020 acre refuge hosts a rare piece of the past, a remnant mixed grass prairie, an island where the natural grasslands escaped destruction because the rocks underfoot defeated the plow. The refuge provides habitat for large native grazing animals such as American bison, Rocky Mountain elk, and white-tailed deer. Texas Longhorn cattle also share the refuge rangelands as a cultural and historical legacy species. More than 50 mammal, 240 bird, 64 reptile and amphibian, 36 fish, and 806 plant species thrive on this important refuge. The visitors to the refuge can enjoy wildlife watching, hunting, fishing, special events, and much more. The reintroduction of wildlife is to ensure wildlife once native to the Wichita Mountains will always remain on the landscape. Recent reintroductions include the river otter, burrowing owls, and the prairie dog, which is now flourishing in four areas of the refuge. Efforts to perpetuate the major species of wildlife once imperiled have been very successful. The big game herds have increased to the point that they are no longer in danger. The major goal of big game herd management has changed from assuring the perpetuation of an endangered species to maintenance of representative herds utilizing good range use practices. Three native herds dominate the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge, including American bison, Rocky Mountain elk, and white-tailed deer. While neither native nor wildlife, a herd of Texas Longhorn cattle is maintained to preserve the cultural and historical legacy of this breed. These four species are the basis for the vegetative management of the refuge as they are responsible for the vast majority of grazing and browsing. Each herd is evaluated to determine the number of animals which can be maintained by the refuge due to the limited availability of forage. 
As a result, minimum objective levels for each herd are set, which is the fewest number of animals allowed in each herd. These limits allow only approximately 33% of the grassland vegetation available to be used each year, ensuring that all wildlife will have ample forage available to them at any given time. The 59,020 acres of refuge lands includes approximately 20,000 acres of open mixed grass prairie, with the remainder being forest and rock outcroppings. The grasslands are dominated by little blue stem with Indian grass, big blue stem switchgrass, side oats grama, hairy grama, and blue grama, having a large percentage of the overall species composition. The forested areas are dominated by post oak, blackjack oak, and eastern red cedar. Habitat management generally consists of the use of prescribed fire to increase diversity and palatability of grass species, to encourage forb growth, and to decrease succession of woody species into the grasslands. The herds of bison, elk, deer, and longhorn are the primary grazers and browsers that utilize the vegetation. Several monitoring techniques are used to evaluate habitat status, including grassland utilization and frequency checks, conducted in January and July respectively, and interior woodland and in edge transects. Refuge staff carefully consider many management techniques and employ them in varying degrees according to the situation. Sometimes sensitive areas are close to the public so that the land can recover more quickly. Prescribed burning, mowing, and planting native plants are also some of the tools used to protect, restore, and enhance natural, national wildlife refuges. Standardized ground and area wildlife surveys and vegetation surveys are conducted to inventory populations and document habitat use. Units are evaluated by how well they met habitat and wildlife use objectives. Another unique feature of the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge is the Holy City of the Wichitas, which stands on a 66 acre area that looks much like Israel during biblical times. Inside the city, you will find numerous full size buildings and structures, including the Temple Court, the Lord's Supper Building, Herod's Court, and Pilate's Judgment Hall, all built with locally quarried granite in the 1930s. You can also explore areas designated as Calvary's Mount and the Garden of Gethsemane, in addition to watchtowers and perimeter walls. While you're visiting the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge and enjoying its picturesque scenery, waterfalls, rugged terrain, and diverse wildlife, there's another place deep in the woods that most visitors don't know exists. It's called the Parallel Forest. It's located on the eastern side of the Wichita Mountains along Oklahoma State Route 115. It was built by the federal government as an experiment to deal with the effects of the Dust Bowl. Over 20,000 red cedars were planted exactly six feet apart in every direction on over 16 acres. The sunlight is blocked by the canopy of the trees, so the eerie feeling is even more exaggerated by the gloomy atmosphere. Once you enter the forest, no matter which direction you look, you'll see a tree exactly six feet from the next. The government wanted the trees to grow up instead of out, so this design was chosen. 
They have survived for more than a century, and it's one of the creepiest places to visit. Visitors to this haunted forest have reported seeing ghosts with no heads, weird noises, orbs and photographs, feelings of being touched, and many more paranormal experiences. For those who enjoy hiking, the refuge has 15 miles of designated hiking trails that offer the novice and seasoned hiker a rewarding experience. The trails wind through scrub oak forests, across rocky mountains, and over grass prairies. Wildlife abound along these trails. Gaia GPS lists nine of the best hiking trails in the Wichita Mountains National Wildlife Refuge. They range from easy to moderate, short to long, Elk Mountain, Post Oak Lake, Lost Lake Dam Loop, Post Oak Falls, Lost Lake Loop, Crab Eyes, Mount Scott's Boy, West Cache Creek Loop, and Quanah Parker Lake Dam. For those wishing to spend a little more time at the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge, Doris Campground contains three group camping sites, 23 single family electric sites, 47 single family non-electric sites, and 20 semi-primitive walk-in tent sites. Most campsites are sizable enough for RVs and trailers. Each campsite is equipped with a picnic table, fire ring, and grill. Roads are paved. Flush toilets and showers are provided within easy walking distance in a centrally located shower slash restroom complex. The group campsites and loops A and D have chemical or vault toilets only and no water. Water is available via hydrants throughout the campground. However, water should be boiled before consumption. A dump station is provided for RVs and trailers. Doris Campground is a recreational hub for visitors to the Wichita Mountains situated along the shoreline of the Quanah Parker Lake. It's a stone's throw away from quality fishing, canoeing, kayaking, and hiking. Campers can toss a line in the water or start up the Little Baldy Trail for a picturesque hike. The Visitor Center, additional trails, and notable features like Mount Scott are just a few miles down the road. I will add that during our visit, because of COVID, many of the facilities were closed and unavailable. However, they did have multiple campsites available, and it is a very nice campground. For those who have made it this far in our Calaventure infomercial, I thank you. I promise you that wasn't my intention. If this infomercial hasn't scared you off, I hope to see you next week as we take a closer look to some of the areas that we have discussed in this video. Again, thank you for joining us, and I hope to see you soon.